So how should we talk about climate change? I asked my friend Bill Nida, give us some advice. The thing to focus on is the last two and a half centuries, I... since the steam engine was everywhere, ubiquitous. That's when we put all this carbon dioxide in the air that would normally not be there. So what we need is the last 200 years of climate science discoveries mashed up with some hip-hop slang. Alright, try this. Let's take it back 200 years to the 1800s up in here when we only had 290 CO2 parts per million in the atmosphere. We had 1 billion homo sapiens on the planet trying to get the groove on and soon lots of them would thanks to industrial revolution. Back when the steam engine had just been invented And nothing was electric except the spirit of the times Progress, driven by the scientific method Joseph Fourier was a Frenchman A physicist and a mathematician He discovered the fact that the atmosphere Acts like a blanket for heat retention The greenhouse effect first described in 1824 Visible light from the sun meets little resistance inbound Cause the size of the wavelengths is hella tight But then when it hits the earth it emits infrared radiation with longer waves and they get trapped and bounce back when they try to escape on their way back up into space climate skeptics today from ted cruz to Rand Paul to bobby jindal might say bounce back off of what introducing john tindall in the 1860s tindall investigated methane and co2 and water vapor to see whether any of them block infrared radiation and they all do but methane and water vapor don't stick around in the atmosphere for long it took a swedish genius to identify carbon dioxide as a regulator sponte arenius 1896 fonte did the math if you cut the co2 levels in half you'll end up with the four to five degree temperature drop all across the map but if you double it he calculated a temperature escalation of five or six degrees because water vapor increases with heat radiation and that feeds back to increase the heat of course in 1896 co2 emissions were pretty moderate so they thought it would take a couple thousand years to double the concentration when they thought of it but you gotta give it to sponte he predicted five or six degrees and that's within the warming range predicted today by the ipcc now in 1927 arenas died a celebrated Swedish civilian and three years later the population of planet Earth exceeded 2 billion in 1938 a British engineer by the name of Guy Callender discovered a rise in carbon dioxide and also measured a rise in temperature in 1958 Roger Revelle demonstrated that the oceans couldn't take care of it he said humans are now carrying out a massive geophysical experiment in 1960 Charles Keeling did some measurements on Mount Loa of carbon carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and every year the level appeared to go up it was rising at a steady rate the same rate as emissions from us burning oil and coal also in 1960 the population hit 3 billion souls and now we got 7.5 billion individuals in the same boat all hooked on fossil fuels like a drug and how we gonna quit huh just say no there's no easy answers there's just the truth and it's inconvenience but the scientific evidence is not recent just that's spontaneous and now we got 417 parts per million and that's an increase in co2 density 40 percent in just two centuries so either we set a carbon budget we set a cap and we stay within the limit or else we can expect a catastrophic greenhouse effect and that's physics and on and on and on in the greenhouse now we gotta figure it